Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about C portfolio and e portfolios. My name is Ali Davidson, and I am the e portfolio analyst here at Carleton. Um, so we're going to be recording this session, uh, just the screen and the audio that we might be using to share online afterwards. So if I repeat one of your questions, that's why. Um, and please feel free at any point to um, ask me a question or throw up a hand. Um, I really want this to be an interactive session, and so please feel free at any point to speak up. All right, so the agenda for today, we're just going to talk really the intro basics about what is an e-portfolio. Then we'll go into different types of e-portfolios, e and I'll show you some examples of student e-portfolios. And then we'll talk about CU Portfolio, which is the technology we're using here at Carleton. And then we'll go into the hands-on session for the second part of this workshop. So to begin, what is an e-portfolio? So um, in its general sense, an e-portfolio is a collection of digital artifacts and ref reflections that provide evidence of a student's learning journey. So um, when you think about, you know, that might be a bit of a mouthful, but generally it's an online space where students can add uh, different pieces of work that they've done and then kind of uh, get deeper into that work by reflecting on it and then showcasing that and sharing um, that portfolio with others. So one of the main features of, C or of an e-portfolio is that it's learner-centered. So the student has full control over what goes into their portfolio, and they are the ones who's creating the portfolio. They also have uh, complete control over who gets to see the portfolio and how it's shared. And then I wanted to highlight the importance of an e-portfolio as a process and an e-portfolio as a product. So it's easy to think about what an e-portfolio product would look like, right? It would be something similar to a website that has lots of different student examples. But, um, it is the process where the student learning is happening. So it's as a student is engaging in thinking about what they want to put into that e-portfolio and what that means to their learning experience, where they're going to be doing that deeper learning. So when I think about an e-portfolio, the first three words that come to mind or the main words that come to mind are collect, reflect, and connect. So collecting evidence of their learning, reflecting on what that uh, learning experience was and what that meant, and then building connections between those individual learning experience to have a greater sense of their education. So what are they collecting? They're collecting artifacts. So uh, I just like to define this term because I'll use it a couple times throughout uh, this workshop. So an artifact is any type of digital content that a student uploads to their e-portfolio. So that could be a Twitter feed, a blog feed, an image, um, a text field. Um, a audio recording, YouTube, Prezi, it goes on and on. So um, if it's digital, you can add it to the ePortfolio. And then reflection. So reflection is central to the ePortfolio pedagogy. So when we think about encouraging students to uh, get deeper into their learning and thinking about, um, oh, what's going on here? I'll just say cancel because I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, so, um, so yes, reflection is really central to, to an e-portfolio. Um, I'm seeing that, that, I don't know what's going on on that screen, but that's okay. <laughs> just, we'll just pay attention to this one up here. Okay, so in that reflection, um, it's promoting metacognitive thinking. So we're asking students, you know, what did that learning experience mean to you? What was it that you learned from that? Um, and where are you going from here, right? So um, really starting to uh, think deeper into that. And then, of course, in that reflection, when they're thinking about what these learning experiences mean to them, it's encouraging students to better articulate their competencies. So what was it that I learned from writing that paper, right? So rather than just simply writing the paper, handing it in and forgetting about it, getting into a deeper reflection about what it was, what the skills were that they built um, as they went through that, that assignment. And then connection. So this is really tied into uh, the reflective component. So as a student is reflecting on um, their education or the work that they're doing, they're building connections between individual learning experiences. So this is something that we often see in um, an undergraduate program, that students' learning experiences are really fragmented between their classes or between the assignments that they're doing in their, in their courses. So the ePortfolio provides a venue for the student to collect all of those learning experiences and then um, make connections between all of those to have a broader sense of their um, of their education. 
So as I said here, it's connecting academic, professional, co-curricular, and personal experiences. And this is where you start to see the integrative learning happening, right? These are when students are building connections that they wouldn't normally see between things. And this is a space where students can start to bring in not just their course content, but integrating their other experiences and um, their other uh, competencies that they can bring in and kind of build that connection between it. So, you know, I'm a really good... Um, I'm a really good writer, and you can see from the work that I do that uh, that's another component of my writing skills and building that connection. All right, and then folio thinking. So this uh, quote is from a book called Documenting Learning with ePortfolios, um, which I really like and I recommend that um, if you're interested in integrating ePortfolios into a course or program that you take a look at. Uh, we actually have a couple copies on hand here that you could borrow. So um, folio thinking. Um, is a reflective practice that aims to encourage students to integrate discrete learning experiences, enhance their self-understanding, promote taking responsibility for their own learning, and support them in developing an intellectual identity. So that ePortfolio is really the venue for all of that to happen. And if we can use pedagogical practices that encourage that type of learning, then that's where you're going to see that happen. So ePortfolios make student learning visible. I really like this example. This is a uh, student from a first year seminar who um, was asked to create an e-portfolio of uh, their essay writing process. So you can see in the tabs here, I don't, I don't know if it's too small, but you have, um, she had a couple of reflections in the first semester and in there was kind of setting the context for who she was as a learner, what she was, um, you know, what to, where she had come from and what she was doing in the program. And then um, in the tabs you have essay research, essay organizing and writing, and essay revising. And then there was a final course reflection that went over that whole process. Um, so you can see that it really is allowing the students to see their progress and also providing really nice evidence for um, an, ass an assessor or an instructor to look at that student's performance throughout the term or program. Um, I had just an anecdotal thing from an instructor who had their students creating um, a research portfolio. She said that in previous years she had students creating research portfolios on a paper-based system and she would ask students to bring things to class and of course they didn't or they would bring half of it or you know whatever they could find and so she found that this really helped with that process because the students every time they came to class it was a simple click and all of that information would be available to them to work on in class and for her to consult with the students in class and they could also share that with their peers if you if they chose to do that. So assessment of e-portfolios. So of course when we talk about assessment, we want to talk about formative and summative evaluation. So um, with formative uh, evaluation, we're thinking about assessment for learning. And an e-portfolio is a really nice um, venue to do that, right? So having students go throughout that process and providing feedback to them um, so that they uh, can kind of engage with you um, in, uh, in that process of, um, of doing their work. And then uh, you also have assessment of learning, right? So that um, summative evaluation that students could hand in a final product at the end. Um, and then different ways of assessing the e-portfolio, of course self-assessment through reflection, right, the students are always thinking about it and continually kind of building on that. Uh, and then peer review, um, this is a really nice thing um, because it provides more of an authentic audience. So besides just having the uh, instructor look at the e-portfolio, you have the uh, students providing feedback to each other and thinking about more than the, just the instructor as they're creating content. Um, the other thing that we have observed with some of the students um, that were using ePortfolios this year was that their ePortfolios got a lot better after looking at their peers' portfolios, right? Because they were getting inspired by the work that their peers were doing and got a lot of uh, different creative ideas from each other. So they kind of raised the bar for each other as they looked at their portfolios. And then, of course, there's always going to be the uh, role for the instructor to provide feedback. So um, just to further on this, um, thinking about implementing ePortfolios in into a course or program, it's very important to allocate a grade to the ePortfolio. So I've had um, instructors come to me who think, you know, I'm going to um, have the students do all of these different uh, assignments and then they can put them into the portfolio at the end so they'll have a nice kind of representation of all their learning experiences. And that's great, but make sure that there's something within the portfolio that they're grading, getting grades for because students have lots of different types of online spaces that they have to go on to for their learning um, and you know this is not going to seem like something that they're going to want to do. So make sure that it's worth their while to, to go into the ePortfolio. And I mean 
If you're doing the ePortfolio and there isn't a lot of grades for it, then maybe you have to go back and think about is this the best tool um, for, for uh, this course and my, my objective, right? And then as for formative evaluation, I was talking about that before. Um, I'll give you an example of the importance of uh, formative evaluation with an ePortfolio. So we had a larger class that used ePortfolios this past year, and the students were expected to write weekly reflections. But because of the size of the class, um, the TAs weren't able to grade weekly reflections. So what the students were told is, go ahead and post those in CU Portfolio, and then at the end of the year, um, we'll grade a couple of your assignments or your, your uh, reflections and give you an overall grade for that. So what ended up happening was that, you guys, you can expect, I see the smirks already, <laughs> is that the students did them all at the last minute. Um, and so what went along with that is uh, we, we asked feedback from students about how long it took to learn how to use the tool. And the average response was between one and two hours. So it was, it, there, but there was a learning curve. You know, there is, and you'll experience that today, that you have to get a function and kind of a, a feel for it. But when the students were under the gun trying to write all of these different reflections from throughout the term, plus they had other extra content on top of that, that extended the learning curve because they were so stressed out. So it ended up being a really big task for them where it could have been broken down into more sizable chunks, right? So when you're thinking about uh, implementing the ePortfolio, to scaffold it for your students, I strongly suggest to have um, check-in points with them, either if that's peer review, some instructors did that, or to give, um, give uh, them feedback. Okay, so we'll just talk about different types of e-portfolios, learning assessment and showcase. So a learning portfolio. This is what I've mostly been talking about today. So a learning portfolio is that process or working portfolio. So um, this is what I like to call a living document, right? Where the student is going through that collection and reflection um, stage. So this is not going to be the shiny uh, final version that they would use to apply for a job or to showcase at the end, but rather the part where things don't have to be perfect and they're going through those reflections and thinking about their learning experiences. And this can be used at the course or program level. Um, in the software that we have, students can maintain um, a program level e-portfolio while doing a portfolio for a specific course if that was a requirement or if they wanted to do that. So I'll show you an example of a student e-portfolio here. This is Helen and she created this e-portfolio for a um, English as a second language for academic purposes. And this was documenting their research pr uh, process. And I really liked this because the instructor had the students, before they even went into making a research question, think about what their program actually is. Because a lot of these international students were coming, and, uh, coming to school and not actually sure about what the program was that they were going into. Because maybe it was mom and dad who had said, you're going into engineering or whatever it is. And this is something that I hear echoed even from instructors who aren't dealing with international students. It's just, what the heck are they doing in their program? <laughs> so this, was, um, this is an example, exploring your major. So the instructor asks the students um, to go through, describe the introduction, the types of awards that they can get, the, te uh, the textbooks that they're using. Um, and I guess here she also included an RSS feed of something that was relevant to the research and work that she does in her program, and then different diagrams in that way. Um, and then you can see here, so this is really uh, that working portfolio where she was continually adding things. So, you know, she started in the first term with her about me, uh, or sorry, the first class, and then throughout um, the course was adding to all of these different tabs. And you can see at the end she has a midterm reflection and a final reflection as well. Okay, so assessment portfolio. So an assessment portfolio um, typically is uh, used in a capstone or as a graduate requirement. So this is a portfolio that shows evidence of a student's learning and um, typically is tied to program level learning outcomes or to graduate student attributes. So um, it can be as a requirement for students to be able to graduate out of a program that they have to create this portfolio first. Um, typically, this type of e-portfolio is highly structured for the student. So you would create a template for them where they would um, put in um, their kind of evidence that they have met that specific graduate attribute. So I'll, so I'll show this example, which is really nice. It's from a university in New Zealand, actually. So exotic. Um, so this is just one example of a tab. And they actually use Mahara over at this university. So um, the way that this looks, you can get kind of a feel for it at other universities. 
So you can see this was a part of the, um, the template on the left hand side. So graduate standard one, and this is what the student had to meet to graduate. And so you can see here, this was the content that she put in, and she has attached files that go along with it. And each one of these tabs meets another standard. So that's an example of an assessment portfolio. And then a career or showcase portfolio. So this is the bright shiny portfolio, the fancy thing at the end. So uh, a career portfolio can be created on its own or it can be created as a result of a learning portfolio. So the student has gone through that process and then either they may want to just share that with someone or what they could do is after going through the process of creating their learning portfolio, pull specific items that they were really proud of or pull specific things that really meant something to them that they wanted to show on that uh, showcase portfolio. So you can kind of create another one um, out of the original. Um, I like to call this more like an in-depth resume or a resume with evidence. So instead of on a resume, an inst or a student would say, you know, um, I have strong communication skills. Well, in an e-portfolio, they would say, I have strong communication skills, and here is a YouTube video of me doing a presentation, or here is an excerpt from an assignment that I wrote that shows my strong communication skills, right? So they're getting that much deeper into it, and then the potential employer, or maybe it's a potential supervisor, if they're applying for grad school, would look into that and um, be able to kind of sift through the content that, it, that they wanted to look at. So I'll show, show you some examples of this. So this is Kenina Holmes. She's um, an instructor here at Carleton in journalism. And she actually created this e-portfolio um, for a teaching dossier to apply for promotion and tenure. So some of this might look familiar to you with the different types of content that she's included. So she has an about me section with a little description. And then she's embedded her CV here. Um, and then all throughout in each one of these tabs has provided a description with um, additional evidence um, for her applications. You can see with the teaching effectiveness, she has a photo and then so attached files. So those are those artifacts that um, kind of provide that evidence there. And then the next one. So this is, um, so Kelly is a student um, in the Teaching English as a Second Language program here at Carleton. And um, this started out as a learning portfolio, but the instructor in the course had asked the students to think about potentially using this e-portfolio to apply for a job. So as a student was going through the process of creating this portfolio for the class, you know, they were encouraged to, you know, you, you might want to use it in the future. So, and you can see that Kelly has been very mindful of the audience of this and has spent a lot of time in her portfolio making it look really polished and, and uh, professional. So she has here her about me and then her teaching philosophy where she's used some eye-catching artifacts, a word cloud there. And I really liked her teaching experience and material development pages because she's done a nice job of integrating different types of artifacts into the text to really kind of um, bring some life to the portfolio. So again, attached files down there. And then same thing here with material development. And I'll show you her last page, Reflection on ePortfolio. I like this. Talk about metacognition, right? Reflecting on the process of reflecting in the ePortfolio. Um, down here, she has this photo, and she says, I took this photo this past fall from the locks at Carleton. I chose to include it because it symbolizes the process of looking back and reflecting on this past year. So I thought that was a really nice kind of finalized uh, version of her ePortfolio at the end there. And then... This is Jordan. So this is a student, a master's student in social work. Um, and she created this portfolio again for a course. And it was, um, I think, integrating theory into practice. And um, the students were really given a lot of free reign on what they wanted to include here. And again, we're kind of told, this is your learning portfolio. You will be graded on it. But um, you know, the, the instructor had encouraged them to use it if they'd like to when applying for a job. Um, so you can see she has her resume included there. And then she kind of hacked CU portfolio and used images to create banners and that kind of stuff. She got really, um, really creative with it, that was, uh, which was fun. So you can see she has lots of different embedded content there. And another one here. And then she, um, there, this is an audio file. Um, and then she has links out to different articles on the work that she had done. And then, 
a collaborative e-portfolio. So this is kind of on its side, but I really wanted to include it because it's a capability that we have with the technology here at Carleton. Um, a collaborative portfolio, of course, would be for group work. So multiple students can go on to the same portfolio to create um, a, a, a piece of work together. So the example that I have is actually from the EDC here. Um, so we got together here in this training room, um, I guess it was sometime this winter, and um, everybody brought a little description of themselves um, and a photo of themselves and some type of artifact to show the work that they've done um, or, or show some type of work that they've done here. And um, then we all got together, went into the e-portfolio and added our content. And obviously you can see we had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> this is the, some of the administration girls here. So if I scroll down, you'll see, you know, there's a photo and then a description. Um, so each person had their own section that they added uh, content to. So that's just one way that this uh, collaborative e-portfolio was realized. Uh, this is the educational development team bunch of them. I'm sure you'll see some familiar names. And then EdTech. There you go. It's another photo of us. Not as fun as the admin people. but <laughs> um, Yeah, and well, there's me. And the last one, we have instructional design. So you can see lots of different artifacts that were used in this one. Isn't that great? ESA's just so creative. So that was actually, this is something to think about when, uh, if you're choosing to use CU Portfolio um, in a course, that was one thing um, that was interesting. We made sure that when we asked students to add photos, that we said, if you don't feel comfortable adding a photo of yourself, add something that represents you. So I've seen people, you know, use boots. I thought this was great, you know, her path of life and showing an example of it. Um, another one was a student who had a, or it was a, actually another staff, I think, who had a bridge, you know, kind of a bridge that looked, I think it was at their cottage or something like that. So just um, being mindful and inclusive um, that allowing them to have an alternative if they don't feel comfortable posting a photo of themselves. Okay, so. What is CU Portfolio? So you saw some examples of student e-portfolios on the platform. So CU Portfolio is Carleton's electronic uh, portfolio software, and it's powered by Mahara, which is an open source software. And it's compatible with Moodle. So that was one of the reasons why we chose uh, CU Port or that why we chose Mahara as the platform, because it does have that connection with Moodle. Um, that to be said, it uh, has not been enabled yet. Um, so, <laughs> and I can hear you all thinking, when is it gonna be enabled? Um, so just to describe um, the compatibilities, um, there's a couple different plugins. One of them is single sign-on. So when students log into CU Learn, they're immediately in CU Portfolio. They just have to click a link and be brought out there. Another one is being able to submit um, e-portfolios from CU Portfolio into CU Learn for grading so that it's connected to your gradebook. And then the other one is pushing assignments that have been um, submitted into CU Learn into CU Portfolio. Um, CU Portfolio has a file repository there. So students could easily kind of push it into their e-portfolio if they wanted to. Um, so I don't have a time for when it will be compatible with Moodle. Uh, right now we are still in the pilot stage and it just depends on um, stuff that's over my head. So <laughs> but at some point we are planning on um, of having that capability. And then features of CU Portfolio. So as I said at the beginning, an ePortfolio is a personal learning environment and definitely CU Portfolio has all of those features. So students choose what content goes in there, they choose how it's laid out or how it looks, and they choose who gets to see it. Um, the default setting in CU Portfolio for any ePortfolio is private. So um, I said here it's a safety net, right? So students um, you know, I've seen other uh, examples of people using WordPress or Wix or Weebly or something like that, but what's really nice about CU Portfolio is the default is private and then they can choose to just share it with one person, you know, just with their instructor or just with a couple peers until they feel that it's ready and then they can go off and share it with more or never share it with more if they don't want to, right? Um, protects your privacy as well, so all the data is hosted here at Carleton, so we're not using a third party to host any of the data, so when students upload content, it's staying here at home. Um, and uh, yeah, the shareability, they can share it with one, two, seven, seventeen billion if they want to. So licensing and copyright. So this is a fun thing. This is one of the first times that students have been able to create content and then throw it out to the world um, through school, right? So um, 
this was uh, a really curious and interesting thing going through. Um, I visited all the classes that UCU portfolio this year and did an intro session with them. And I would always come up to a slide like this and I would say, so who is familiar with copyright on the internet? And then it would be crickets. <laughs> so this is an area of digital literacy that I have observed students don't have. Um, and this e-portfolio is a really nice way of introducing that to students um, and engaging that in them in that uh, conversation. And um, as I'm sure all of you can appreciate, this is a skill that everybody should have. Um, everybody is using the internet, everybody is creating content and sharing it. So um, this is a really nice opportunity to have that conversation with students. Um, so I share with students a couple ways of finding content on the internet that is free to use. So finding things that are public domain or have a Creative Commons license. So for example, um, searching via Google um, to do a filter by license. I don't know if any of you have done that before, but it's really handy. Um, I can show it to you afterwards if you'd like to see it. Uh, this is something that, that's nice if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation and you want to make sure that all of your content is free of copyright, you can search through it that way. And then there's a couple, a couple other different uh, websites that have um, different uh, free images that students can use. All right, and then CU portfolio support. So um, this year uh, I went through and created a website that includes videos, step-by-step -step videos, and step-by-step -step documents that students can follow and you can follow if you're um, doing anything on CU portfolio. And then we also have the manual from Mahara that's a lot more detailed. I find it's overwhelming for beginners. That's why the, um, the website was made that is a little bit more simple to follow. Uh, we also have a forum online where you can post questions or you can view questions that have been asked and answered um, on CU Portfolio. And then of course you can contact us at the EDC if you have questions. And then um, for courses, this year I was doing in-class workshops. And those proved to be very effective and students seem to um, really appreciate those. So I would come in, do a little intro, what is an e-portfolio, and then uh, walk the students through, like the workshop we're gonna do today, on creating um, a page in CU portfolio so they get kind of a handle on how to use the technology with an expert in the room with them. Okay, so um, I guess we'll go ahead and log into CU portfolio. First, I'll show you um, I'll just give you a tour of the technology and then you can go ahead and log in. So I'll put that URL up there again. Okay, so this is the main dashboard when you log in to CU Portfolio. Um, you can see here, this is where the support resources are. So they're very easy to find um, if you're running into troubles or your students are running into troubles. So if I check this one out, this is the support guide that we've created with lots of different step-by-step um, -step instructions. There we go. Um, and then here we have the create, share, and engage buttons. So those are kind of the three main functions that a uh, user will be doing on CU Portfolio. So creating content, sharing that content with others, and then um, through groups connecting with others. So sharing their portfolio through groups or um, connecting with their peers that way. And then on these top tabs here, we have content. So um, I actually noticed a couple of you logged, on, logged in online before this class and some of you updated your profiles. So I'll just provide a bit of an um, explanation for what the profile is. So the profile function um, in CU Portfolio is an outward facing institution profile page. So when you add content to that page, any user on CU Portfolio could search out your name and then see what's on that profile. So this is something that um, I like to keep strictly for the student's own personal use and not associated with a course specifically. Um, so if we're asking students to create an about me for the course, have that within a separate portfolio that's only shared with the class, whereas the profile is something that you kind of use more broadly. Then we have files. So um, as I was mentioning, there's a file repository in CU Portfolio. So you can see in mine, I have a million different files that are in my file repository. So that just makes um, for ease of use. So if I had added something to a learning portfolio and then I wanted to pull that and put it into a showcase, it's already added there and it's very simple for me to um, put it into my showcase portfolio. And then I have, there is a, a resume, a built-in resume feature. Um, so students can kind of, as they're going throughout their program, um, add different qualifications or experiences to that resume and then choose to pull that onto a portfolio at the end. And then under the portfolio tab, we have um, pages and collections. So this is the content the student creates and then uh, content that is shared by the user and shared with the user. So you can see a full printout here. 
or a full list. So you can see all the different people that I've shared different ePortfolios with. And I can also create that public URL. So that is how I would share um, an ePortfolio with somebody outside of Carleton. And then there's this import and export feature. Um, I've actually, I'm surprised I haven't heard, had anybody ask this question yet. So how long are we going to have CU portfolio after we graduate or after students graduate? So there hasn't been a date set for that. I know that there's definitely discussions about wanting to allow alumni to have some access, if not access for a long time um, after they graduate. But if we can't give access indefinitely to students, because CU Portfolio is an open source software, it's very easy for them to export all of their content from CU Portfolio and then import it into another uh, CU or another ePortfolio hosting system that's powered by Mahara. So um, there's ones that are online that students can make accounts for free that give, I think, 200 megabytes of space, which is usually sufficient for the amount of content that they're creating. Um, and then they can take that content with them after they graduate, even if we don't provide them with access, access afterwards. And then groups, self-explanatory. So you can create groups within CU Portfolio. They're also listed here on the right-hand side. Um, when you uh, sign up with a course, uh, your course will be considered a group. And so all of your students are a member, you're the admin, and so that is where they would share their ePortfolios with their peers if they wanted to view each other's. Okay, is there any questions about that? No? Okay. Yes? Yes. Those, those two things aren't though linked though. So no, they're not. If you gave people that this is your group that you've been created in CU Learn, then they'd have to go and find those people. That's right. So the okay. yeah. So the question was, um, there's the potential to create groups in CU Learn and also in CU Portfolio. Are those connected? No, not at this point, definitely. Um, you, so you could, you, you will have, it automatically will be created for you. You'll have a group with all of your students in it and it'll be just the title of your course code. Um, you also can make different um, peer groups. So if you wanted to do different study groups together or collaborative groups together, you can do that on your own or ask the students to create them themselves, but it's not connected to Moodle. Okay, so I think what 